Setting up proper gain staging is going to be a critical part of sampling and being happy with the results that you get. Remember, the more you have to raise the volume of the samples later on, the more you raise the noise floor. So if you've got a noisy situation where you've got some 60 cycle hum or some hiss coming from the keyboard, when you raise the sample volume up, you're going to be raising that noise volume up as well. So you want to make sure that the source instrument is sending a nice saturated audio signal. Therefore, before you even get into beginning to sample and setting up auto sampler, you're going to want to really make sure that your audio bus in is working the way you want to. So the first thing you're going to do is set up your audio interface. So inside of main stage, you'll go to preferences and you'll go to the audio preferences. You want to choose the audio input that you're going to use and set it up. Make sure that you have access to the inputs that you're going to need to get to. Make sure you're at a sample rate that you're happy with. Um, if you're going to be sampling, you want to sample at a higher rate than 44.1. If you want to sample higher, you're going to have to set your audio engine higher. So now I've got it all set up. Before I even set up an sampler track, I'm just going to set up an audio track. So you'll open up your audio device um, controls. In my case, I'm using an Apollo. So I'll switch to line level on my input and I'll play a few notes. And it looks like I'm getting a pretty good level. It's hitting the yellow. It's nice and saturated there on input two. I could probably go a little bit more. I'm at about 75% volume on the source instrument. Again, the further away I can get from that noise floor without actually hitting and clipping, the better. This way I don't have to raise the volume of the sample instrument up. So I've got my source instrument plugged into input two, and I'm going to flip back over to main stage. And before I worry about a sample track, I'm just going to set up an audio track with uh, the input as input two. Now in this case, I'm using mono because I'm going to be sampling a Moog Sub 37. And this Moog is a mono instrument. I want to stick with the type of instrument that I plan on using. I don't want to uh, set up a stereo track and only sample one side of it. I'm setting up a mono track so that it's going to automatically be center panned for me. And I don't have to worry about, uh oh, I sampled a stereo file and the right side recorded nothing and the left side recorded my sound source. So here we go. I create a new sound and I'll play a few notes. And it looks pretty good. I'm hitting that nice yellow area. The audio signal is saturated. So again, the levels of your audio interface may not necessarily line up perfectly to the levels in main stage. Uh, some audio interfaces allow you to calibrate their meters. This one does not. So I just did a double check to make sure that I'm getting a good, clean, saturated audio signal. And I'm plugged in to input two. Now, if you're going to want to do any EQing or anything like that, if you're using a preamp, you might want to do that, especially with some of these old keyboards, because remember, you want to get the best sound you can get out of it. So if you're recording in Logic and you do that kind of stuff to your keyboard input signal path, then you're going to want to do that now. If you usually go through a channel strip, like a Focusrite ISA or a Universal Audio 610, um, you know, both good choices for keyboards that can warm up some old keyboards without uh, necessarily coloring the tone too much. You're going to want to do that on the front end. Get it sounding exactly as you'd want it recorded before you sample it.